Two women, both of whom claim to be Canadian, have fled the last shrinking enclave of ISIS in Syria. With just a few hundred extremist fighters holding out in a remote area, women, children and the elderly are turning themselves in to Kurdish fighters surrounding the town. Now, they are hoping to get to the safety of refugee camps. This according to the non-profit Canadian organization Families Against Violent Extremism. Two women claiming to be Canadian did speak to American media in Syria. We're about to hear from them. But we should note that CBC News has yet to confirm whether these are the same women identified by the nonprofit. Take a listen. I didn't know anything about ISIS or anything. Just just come and see, just come and see. Do I regret it coming, you mean? No, I don't. In the sense, I had my kids here. As your husband, he's like, I'm telling you to come here. And as, as, a, as a, a Muslim wife, you have to obey. Now, Global Affairs Canada has told CBC News that it is aware of Canadian citizens being detained in Syria, but Ottawa has not confirmed the identity of these detainees. Here now is the CBC's Shanifa Nasser with what we know so far. It began when a Canadian woman reached out from the city of Baguz, saying she'd been trying to escape ISIS for seven months. She managed to send messages to the organization Families Against Violent Extremism, saying she was seeking safety with her two children, and and she wasn't alone. A second Canadian woman, also with two children, was with her. Director Alexandra Bain convinced the women to turn themselves in to Kurdish forces. She would have only been getting news from ISIS for the last several years. They see the Kurds as, as a big enemy. I had let her know that if she was able to surrender, that they would treat her justly and she would be in the camp where our other Canadians are being held. Where the women were from in Canada and how they ended up in ISIS territory, neither Bain nor the federal government would say. Global Affairs Canada says there's little they can do to help. Bain says there are now 27 Canadians being held in Kurdish camps. Most are children. Children Bain says she wants to see brought home. To be a voice against joining things like ISIS. And that's really what we're hoping for. Well, New York Times correspondent Rukmini Kalamaki is one of the reporters who interviewed those women. She spoke to us from an undisclosed location in Syria and described how she came into contact with the two women who say they are from Canada. The local militia that is controlling um, that screening point identified them to me as Canadians before I spoke to them. They spoke perfect English uh, with, with what sounds to me um, uh, to, be, uh, to be a North American accent. Um, one of them spoke very little, uh, very little Arabic. The other one spoke broken Arabic, so they're clearly not from there. And they talked in detail about their lives um, in uh, one of them was from the Lauren Heights area of Toronto, the other one, which is from Alberta. So, again, identified by the Kurdish fighters there and also in the stories that they tell you. But, you know, we need to also point out the fact that both these women, uh, they each have two children. In fact, one of the mothers brought her Canadian-born kids into the war zone. Was there any remorse or regret expressed by these mothers? The one who brought her children from Canada... um began weeping in front of me, uh, telling me how difficult her life had been inside the Islamic State. The, the story that she told uh, was a story of uh, falling in love with a man who became ever more radicalized during uh, during the years of their courtship and then the years of their marriage. Um, he convinced her to, to move to the Islamic State. She did so against the wishes of her, of her mother and father. She was actually a Christian to begin with and converted uh, to please him. And... Um, and, and, and so she basically told the story of, 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 trying to, of, of trying to maintain her marriage with her husband. I don't know that I fully buy it, um, but that was, that was the portrayal that she gave us. Mm-hmm. Again, the story that she told you, uh, although you, you do say you have some cynicism around it or at least question it. Uh, we need to also point out here, uh, Rukmini, and I want to thank you for this. We're actually using uh, the images and the video that you yourself uh, shot while on the ground. And in the video, we're seeing not only the two women you spoke to, but a, a number of other women. We're also hearing that there may be more Canadians like the two you spoke to being held in Kurdish-controlled areas of Syria. Uh, what can you tell us about that? There's definitely other Canadians that are that that, that are being held. Um, France 24, which is a, a French TV station, um, interviewed a woman who appeared to be in her 40s, uh, who claimed to be Canadian. Uh, Omar Nazimara Singham, who's a British in Canada that deals with uh, terrorism. Uh, he and um, uh, and a Canadian journalist also also interviewed other Canadian women who were in a holding camp. So there's there's. 
probably half a dozen, possibly more, uh, Canadian women and children. In addition, there are at least two Canadian men that are in, in custody.